Hey everybody, Don Kramer with the Kramer Group at Urban Nest Realty. Welcome to episode, what the heck episode is it today? Can you believe that, ladies and gentlemen? We forget because we're in a busy world right now. We are episode 66 of Coffee with Kramer and Colleen. And cheers to you out there today. I'm Don Kramer again with the Kramer Group at Urban Nest Realty. Colleen Schaefer, my partner, sends her best today. She's out and about. Uh, we're doing the real estate thing in this wonderfully warm time here in July. It's the dog days of summer, ladies and gentlemen, and it's toasty out there. So again, make sure you're staying hydrated. Make sure you're staying cool, staying in the shade. And for the furry ones, make sure they've got plenty of water, plenty of shade, and plenty of cool temperatures. So today's episode's a little different. So we want to kind of talk about a post that was out there on the social media interwebs and kind of want to dive into some information and news because our world is ever changing. In fact, yesterday I was asked, do I have bears swinging nunchucks on my bingo card of 2020? Well, I wish I had because I saw a video of a bear swinging nunchucks. It was all over. And it was hilarious. But between murder, hornets, COVID, you name it, 2020 is a year, I, I'll be honest, I unlike any other that I've known in my lifetime. So anyway, it's an ever-changing environment. So what we love to do on this show is go with the news, go with the information, give you the data, and we curate that information, good, bad, or otherwise, about Las Vegas, about the housing market, so you can make the decision. And we want to kind of touch base on what somebody said here uh, recently. And when I heard this quote, and I'm looking at the data and the information, I'm going, okay, you know, you're going with the magic eight ball here. This is not how we make decisions. If, if you kind of want to make decisions off the magic eight ball, and that's how you live your life, and, and you've done well so far, congr congratulations. But as we used to say, when I played golf, there were two things that don't last. It, pros putting for pars and dogs chasing cars. And this, if you this is what you're going, or somebody says you're going with your gut, it's like pros putting for pars. It just is not going to last. You're going to get lucky some now and again, but uh, good luck. Anyway, if you're tuning into this show for the first time, do us a big favor. Hit the like button. Let us know you're here. Comment. You got a good morning beverage you're still working on. It's late morning. It took us a little longer to get today going. It's been a busy day. I kind of wanted to pull some of this information together because I wanted to bring, bring this up to you. But again, cheers to you for tuning in. So before we get into this post, um, I rem I'm reminded of a couple of adages, and, and we, we live by those today at the Kramer Group. You know, when you network or you're looking for people or you're researching or doing for that nature, you know, used to be the old adage, if, if you know, your, know a plumber, ask your CPA. You know, if you know a real estate agent, you know, if you're looking for a plumber, ask your real estate agent. If you're looking for a financial advisor, ask your real estate agent. If you're looking for an accountant, ask your real estate agent because most of likely they are part of their network. Now, that being said, what we don't do is, should I buy or this, stock, this stock or sell that stock? Ask my real estate agent. And that's not what we're here for. Yeah, we, we might have some financial investments across the board, but what we do is we'll say, okay, here's, here's a couple of financial advisors you may want to work with. They may be the best fit. They may be aligned to what your goals are uh, with your finances. Let's put you in touch with them. Don't go to me and say, well, which stock should I buy or sell? I'm here to advise you on probably one of your first or second largest assets, your real estate purchase or your real estate sale or your real estate investments. Those, those conversations I'm willing to have but I'm also excited to connect you with the people that are in the know that can provide you the data and the advice and give you the value you need. So when we get into this quote here, 
This is from somebody who has a very large platform uh, to reach out to people. They're on television, they're on social, they're on web, they meet, they've got books, blah, blah, blah. But what they do is they provide financial advice. And they have a long range of, of doing it. They have honed their sharpening skills in financial advice. And I'm sure they also know some stuff about real estate. However, the quote is, is you know, scratching my head. And um, like other people in our group, we're going to go, you know what? Do us a big favor. Do, your, do yourself a favor. When you, when you put stuff out like this, think about it in the larger context. And if, if, if this is not your subject matter, put you in touch with some people or say, you know, this is just my opinion, but you know, go consult, go consult the experts. Because if I'm looking for financial advice, like I said, I'm consulting the experts. I've got some ideas, I've got some opinions, but these are the people in the know. And that's what they get paid for. That's what I get paid for from a real estate agent. So let's dive into this quote, shall we? So this is from a financial person who you've probably seen or read or heard. Her name is Susie Orman. And Susie wrote a uh, quoted back on Facebook in July saying, many of you are asking, should I buy a home right now? There's so much to think about right now than getting a great deal and locking in low interest rates. You need to think about whether the value of the home is going to hold if the neighbors next to you all of a sudden have to foreclose and sell. That would impact your property value. Do you understand what I'm saying? Question mark. If you're afraid and you have any doubts of buying, I wouldn't do it. Just slow down. Your real estate agent might tell you to go through with it, but don't be afraid to walk away if so from something if your gut doesn't want you to go through with it. End quote. End post. Thanks, Susie. Appreciate it. So let's break that down real quick. So I'm just going to take it set, kind of sentence or section by section. So there's so much more to think about right now than getting a great deal and locking in a low interest rate. You know, for the most part, I agree with that. Low interest rates are one factor. We have historically low interest rates. Your dollars go a long way. If you look at last yesterday's episode, we talked about the mortgage rates. We kind of explained per hundred thousand what that principal and interest number is on a thirty-year, a fifteen-year, and a five-year arm. And you know, again, your purchasing power goes a long way. The lower the interest rate, the higher the interest rate, because we all have to work off of payments because it's a lot of it's debt to income or how much we can afford. Uh, negatively impacts your purchasing power. Now, and if you're thinking you're getting a great deal right now, there are purchases to be had. But in Las Vegas, we are at our highest median home price. Now, it's at 325000 Now, that in some cases might seem pretty high. But again, when you factor in the lower interest rates, that counterbalances things. But the, again, I do agree with the statement is there's more to think about. OK, well, we need to think about the job situation. We want to think about what you intend to do with the home over the next several years. Do you want to buy and flip it? Do you want to fix it up and flip it? Do you want to buy and hold? Do you want to buy, hold, rent? Those are the conversations we have with you to decide to kind of put together the picture of what, where, and how you should approach purchasing that home, and if it fits into your plans. In some cases, it things may not fit into your plans today. A year ago, it may not have fit into your plans today. It may not fit into your plans next year. But we have the conversations, we lay out the data, so you have the, the most information. Now, there's a lot of advantages long-term wise to home ownership, even if we bought back before the Great Recession, back in 2008, 2009, 2010. There were people that were paying an awful lot. But after prices collapsed, our market got hit here in Las Vegas harder than any others. We recovered, equity fell back in, and equity is still holding quite high because we have 
a very robust purchasing group buying houses right now. Uh, there's a statement that some people feel that this is more of a, a buyer's market. Well, I'd probably say it's a little, little stronger than a seller's market. However, those interest rates, again, one of the factors are what's keeping buying demand going in light of high unemployment, in light of the lockdowns. There is a big, and I want to go over those in the couple of the next slides here to kind of go the, over those. But let's carry on to the next couple of sentences. So you need to think about whether the value of that home is going to hold if the neighbors next to you all of a sudden have to foreclose and sell. And we're going to dive into some of that here pretty quick. However, let's, let's go with the current market situation. Less than 2% of the homes right now in the Las Vegas Valley, and this has been the situation for the last couple of years now where less than two, about 2% 2 of the homes, so two out of every hundred are either in foreclosure or short sale situation. And those are people either they lost their jobs or they bought too much, they can't afford it, and they have and they stop making payments and have to foreclose. I got a call from a client the other day. They saw a home and it said pre-foreclosure. I did the research. Actually, that home is going into foreclosure, and that home had been on the market for a long time. Now, is that foreclosure going to impact the home values? Well, in light of it being only about 2%, and in most other cases, we have other comps that are of people that have equity or have their jobs or have their mortgages paid off or in a position where they're selling their homes and commanding the value and the equity out of those markets. And so if you've got, if we have homes that are selling vis-a-vis $400,000, let's say, and this foreclosure, which which takes a long time to work through, because that's the other thing, foreclosures are a long process. Once they go through, go to auction, this may go back out in the market. It may get released back out at 380. It may get released back out at 200,000. It's up to the bank to decide how they want to process that foreclosure. Well, in the meantime, you're still selling those $400,000 homes. And if those $400,000 homes compared to what you're buying, neighborhood, feature-wise, all those things, well, those are the comps the appraiser is going to be looking after. Now, we go back to 2008, the market collapses, nobody can afford their homes anymore, there was no equity. Yeah, okay, there's foreclosures right, left, and sideways. Susie is looking back on 10 to 12 years ago what happened, not what the current situation is, and again, We've got a couple slides we want to go after here to show we are in a much different situation than we were in 2008. And again, those foreclosures are treated separately with regards to people's ability to purchase and own a home from an appraisal standpoint, especially in today's current market. And it's been that way for the last several years. And as we work through things and the way foreclosures are not happening right now because there's a moratorium on them, and the forbearance programs, those are going to factor in what the foreclosure load may look like. Again, Susie, it's not just one factor, there are several. And my, na my neighbors to the left of me and the right of me may not all be foreclosing. We might see one, who knows? We might see none, or we might see a few. But this blunt statement of, you know, the value of your home is going to hold when your neighbors are all of a sudden in foreclosures. That's a little fear mongering. So if you're afraid, if you're having any doubt about buying, I wouldn't be doing it, just slow down. Well, I'll take a little, I'm gonna shine a little light on that. In my career, you know, whether it was playing golf, building software, things of that nature, when we look at things and we plan for things, we look, we go with what we know, what we know today, we ask a lot of questions, and then if we still got what we call a doubt cloud, we work either to clear up that cloud or we assign a level of risk to it. And you know what? Today, I believe that strongly applies. It applies in a seller's market, it applies in a buyer's market, it applies to investors. That is 
that is root to me as to how I work with all my clients. I look at what they're doing. I, I, we provide options. We look at the information. We look at the data. We determine, is, you know, is there some level of doubt there? Is there some risk? And if so, how big it that is? And that may result in situations with regards to, you know, whether we're going to deal with a buy, deal with a sell, or deal with investment property. You know, right now I'd probably, you know, we've got investors who we're working with. There's some investors sitting on the side because it's not quite the right situation for them. They're waiting for the data to appear. Now, they're willing to take that chance because that data may still not appear. And we see that a lot in life. But again, you know, if you're afraid, if you have any doubt of buying, well, that's what a real estate agent's there for. And the great ones are the ones that can speak to you about what's going on in the market, what's going on in those particular neighborhoods, what's going on in lending, and how that's, you know, how that purchase is going to uh, work with them, hopefully over the next several years. Now, there are unknowns, and uh, there, Don Rumsfeld, whether you like him or not, said one day there are the known knowns, the known unknowns, the unknown knowns, and the unknown unknowns. Well, COVID murder hornets and bears with nunchucks, I would have put in the unknown unknowns a year ago today. Uh, in my case. So there are wild cards. Um, a lot of, some people use the term black swans out there that the unknown unknown sometimes hit us. And you know what? We've been hit with a couple of unknown unknowns uh, this year. But you know what? They've been cleared up. They're on the table. Now we're working through them. And we'll, maybe we see some other ones. Yeah. Maybe we see some that help us especially in real estate or purchasing? Yeah, that, that's just as possible. So again, it's about clear, you know, our job, provide the data, ask the questions, provide the answers, provide the research to clear up the doubt so you can then determine, is this a good time to buy for yourself? Is this a good time to sell for yourself? Or is this a good time to invest? That's what a good real estate agent's for. And lastly here, you know, the last sentence, your real estate agent might tell you to go through it, but don't be afraid to walk away from something if your gut doesn't want you to go through with it. Well, here, here's my biggest issue. As your real estate agents, we don't tell you to go through with it. Our job's not to tell you what to do. You're more than capable of making the decision. Great real estate agents provide the information, the data they knew, the news, and where they feel things are going, good, bad, or otherwise, for someone who takes on the response and and, and for someone who takes on, and um, and so sorry, I'm I'm a little off track there, getting a little passionate about this. So feel thing where things are going, good, bad, or otherwise, because again. We're here as advisors to give you the information to make the right decision. Like I said, ultimately the decision's yours, ultimately the home is yours, ultimately the mortgage payment is yours, ultimately, you know, this is your life. Now, we provide you the data, we provide you the information, we clear up the questions, we remove the doubt cloud as best we can, then it is your decision to make. So that is our job as a real estate agent and we I strongly believe that a agent worth their salt is with that now there are poor real estate agents that may try to push you into something you're not we're not here to push if if it looks like you can't come to the decision yeah we'll revisit and say maybe maybe the time's not yours um, but if we're giving you the information you need and you feel comfortable with making the right decision there we go now, so for Susie uh, to say, you know, if your gut doesn't want you to go through it, well, we don't go through things with our gut. We go with our head. And if for somebody from a financial standpoint is using their gut versus their head to make a decision, I've got a little bit of questions for it. Again, it's going back to the good old magic eight ball. Should I buy this stock? Sure. Which stock was that? I don't know.
<laughs> so, anyway, that's that's uh, that's a little bit of answering Susie, and I want to go through some of the slides because we went through this. I also shot a video the other day from CoreLogic Data and what they said about the market going down. And again, we want to bring that information to bear because good, bad, or otherwise, you need to know it. So let's go through a couple of these slides real quick because, again, this kind of falls back into we're not going with our guts. We're going with our heads and we're going with what we know. And they paint a bit of a picture. It might not be the clearest picture. Again, there's still some doubt. There's a little bit of fog. It's not it's not crystal clear, but we're working through it. So let's start with that uh, this slide here, which is about long-range projections on future home prices. Now you're going to notice over there on the right side the core logic number of minus six point six percent. So that is based on the data and their economists on a national number over the next twelve months. Now we've got a couple of them here over the current year and then some over the next 12. Now if you look at it, we've got differing opinions. Mortgage Bankers Association uh, project over the current year uh, 4%. National Association of Realtors 3.8%. Uh, Zellman Associates, who's a, one of the leading consultants on real estate and the housing market in the country is projecting a 3% increase over the next 12 months. Reuters poll, 3% as well. Freddie Mac, 2.3%. Fannie Mae, those are the government uh, GSAs. Their rest of this year, either both 2.3% and 0.4% respectively. Zillow, over the next 12 months, a 0.7%. House, um, minus 1%. And then there's the core logic number of 66 so if we look at it from this standpoint, which is MBA on the far side for the rest of this year, 4%, CoreLogic minus 6.6. .6. I mean, that's just a little, you know, 10.6% delt difference between the two. And you know what? If we want to kind of take a hedge over the next year with everything going on, again, we factor in a lot. We don't just take one thing into consideration. You know, probably somewhere plus or minus uh, a percent or two is probably probably where this is going to be at. Again, unless we see another black swan, unless we see another unknown unknown. Now, again, we could in our Las Vegas housing market, we're going to probably get hit a little harder because our unemployment numbers are really high, and that's tied to our leading economic indicator, which or leading economic driver, which is. Tr which is tourism, the hotel industry, the casino industry, convention business. You know, that it, you know, that's going to provide a bit of a laggard. However, we are working to diversify our economy. We we've, we've got a lot of new development going on that they that uh, businesses feel strong about. Uh, we are also still an attractive place for either retirees or people in pre-retirement. And we want to kind of get into those where Las Vegas could also still be an attractive value for people to move in, even though our unemployment numbers are pretty high. And like I said, we're going to go over those here in the next little bit. So again, that were the future projections from all, all the, uh, the some of the leading uh, data and economist resources in housing. Now, let's also go on to about the foreclosure thing and forbearance thing a little bit. And this is from CFPB, Consumer Financial Protection Board. Now, this covers a lot, but again, if you are in forbearance or you're thinking about forbearance, first and foremost, get with your lender and figure out what's going on and figure out ways where you can because there's definitely options to uh, other than forbearance. Forbearance is one of those that, you know, okay, we're kind of getting towards we're running out of options. Now, Back in 2008, 2010, 2011, forbearance was never even, uh, never even a plan. So, <clears throat> CFPB, August, you know, so CFPB, again, first, your lender or your loan servicer may not foreclose on you at least until August 31st, 2020. And that was because of the 100, 180 days in some areas uh, with forbearance. As second, 
If you're experiencing financial hardship due to the coronavirus pandemic, you have the right to request and obtain a forbearance up to 180 days in a, in a lot of those cases, because especially the government back, the GSA back loans. You also have the right to request and attain an extension for, again, up to another 180 days. So total of 360 days. Again, those cover a lot of the loans, a lot of the FHA loans, um, the uh, GSA loans, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, things of that nature. Now, loans that are held by certain banks, they will have probably some forbearance options. Uh, and jumbo loans may or may not. Now, again, that's where you have to check with them. But if you look at the most of our most of the loan programs, a lot of them have some level of forbearance in place. And like I said, some of them are up to six months with an additional six months. So the, again, it is it was a system put into place to where they banks and and GSAs and such could keep can keep people into their houses as best they can through this crisis. Again, the overall the mortgage companies don't want to foreclose on their home because they don't want to go through the mess of the last time. They want to be able to provide loans out there that they can have and secure. They're not in the business of selling real estate. They're in the business of providing lending. So that is why these systems are being put into place and such. Plus, from a foreclosure standpoint, with the courts being shut down and the moratoriums in place, working through that backlog is going to take a while. So the next slide here, again, this is from um, data research company Black Knight. And they noted here in one of their most recent reports, of all forbearances which are past due on their mortgage payment, 77% have at least 20% of equity in their home. So in the ones that probably have less than 10% are the ones that probably are FHA, you know, most likely the low interest rate FHA loans and, and maybe some uh, non-qualified uh, mortgage type loans. But if 77% at least have 20% equity in their homes, people aren't going to immediately walk away from that equity. And if they can't hold on to their home, why go through foreclosure? Why go through that pain when you can then go and sell the property and get some equity out of it if you have to go into a situation to rent? So again, unlike the last go around, the equity position is so much stronger than it was 10, 12 years ago. That plays a big factor into are we going to be doing uh, a bunch of foreclosures. And like I said, if you've got almost you know 80, near 80% 80 of homes with at least 20% equity or more, not, probably, not, probably that, that is a low risk item. Now, again, Black Knight states here, again, just kind of just as we said, high level of equity provides options for homeowners, policymakers, mortgage investors, and servicers helping to avoid downstream foreclosure activity and default-related losses. And there you have it. Now, other thing, too, is let's look at a couple of leading indi couple of uh, indicators here real quick. And this one is from Move.com. And summer home buying season is off to a roaring start as buyers flood into the market. Realtor.com monthly traffic. Realtor.com, one of the leading websites on people searching for homes hit an all-time high of 86 million unique users in June 2020, breaking May's record of 85 million unique users. There was a strong pent-up demand before COVID, and there's continuing to be a strong demand afterwards. And so, or not afterwards, as we continue to move through months after the original shutdown. The other item I want to show you, and this is kind of gets back to us a little locally, and it has to do with showings in Las Vegas. And this is from the system called Showing Time. This, this is kind of a great leading indicator to see where we're at. And you'll see the orange uh, segment here. That's the 2020 weekly average. And the blue segment, it was the last year's. So you can see where the dip was when things were shut down. 
But as we move towards the end, uh, right up to where we're at here for the week of July 19th, we are above 25% weekly over average through July um, 13, 2020. Now we're down from last year's number a bit, but we're still above searches uh, pre pan we're actually above the pre-pandemic search volume and that is a strong indicator that people are out and about looking for houses here in Las Vegas and nationally that that uh, trends even you know um, is pretty strong as well so people are out and about people are searching people are engaged people are qualified there are there is a demand out for buyers and we see that today in our current housing market and so let's go over the last couple of slides because this this was um, a, a good indicator, a good piece too. And this comes from David Shulman. He is senior economist at UCLA's Anderson School. And they just did a recent economic forecast, uh, June 2020, called the post-COVID economy. And here is a couple of notes on the housing market. So the housing market, is they're stating housing market is a bright spot. They're stating here just uh, stepping in, um, despite the spike in unemployment, underlying consumer demand appears to be strong and the forces in play earlier this year will reassert themselves, especially with the availability of sub 3% mortgage rates. We expect the recent tightening of credit standards will loosen which we've started to see more, even jumbo loans are starting to loosen up right now, and as employment growth begins to pick up. As a result, after starts declining to 1.1 million units this year as a whole, we, re we forecast activity will be running at 1.3 million unit annual rate by the end of 2022. So yes, will we see a blip or have we seen a blip? Yes, will we see some recovery? Will it be a V-shaped? Well, it might be a little weird V-shape. It might be a little flattening out coming out of this uh, pandemic. But there's a seat, they're, they're expecting or looking at numbers to return pretty strongly by 2022. So if you're thinking about buying and there is a bit of a dip, well, they're seeing probably a recovery in over the next couple of years in the relatively new term, near term. Other note here, and this is this is the one of the other factors, is work from home impacting the housing market, and they've stated if work from home becomes prevalent post crisis, there will be less need for people to live in expensive urban environments, and it'll be hard to justify paying three thousand to five thousand a month for small apartments that were never designed to be a home office environment, causing rents to fall. Okay, that's in the urban areas. So let's take a look at the last big slide here. So instead of living in San Francisco, New York, and Los Angeles, workers can now choose to live in the relatively less expensive suburbs of Austin, Riley, Nashville, and Denver. Now, Vegas is not on that list, but Vegas meets a lot of that profile still. All that is needed are fast internet connections and a decent airport. Well, I don't know about you, but I've got a decent internet connection. And while the airline industry is going to probably take a little while to return, uh, I'm not too far from the airport. And there are a lot of flights from Las Vegas to the major cities here on the West Coast and even the East Coast and internationally. So Las Vegas, with everything going on, with unemployment still being high, you know, Las Vegas is going to is going to look like a very popular attraction for people that have a fair amount of equity or have the cash and firepower, economic firepower and uh, employment situation to consider relocating to even if they don't have a job in the hotel casino industry. The work from home telecommuting employee is probably going to be something that we're going to be seeing uh, much, on a much larger scale than we did pre-pandemic. So those are the last items there. One final note, and that has to do with Congress, the government. So there was a CARES Act passed by House and Senate, signed by the President. There's also the sitting out there right now the HEROES Act. It's already been passed by the House. 
the Senate will be coming home, coming back from recess. Most likely, they're going to pick it up. They'll probably debate it. We'll see how, if they decide to act upon it, and if they do, most likely if they act upon it and pass it, the president will sign it. And that includes additional stimulus and support for employment. There's probably be some set aside for housing, things of that nature. So again, there's, probably, there's a lot of legislation probably still yet to be done here through this pandemic that will help people stay in their homes. So I appreciate everyone tuning into today's episode. Um, again, if you have comments or thoughts on this, do me a big favor, comment below. We'd love to hear from you, good, bad, or otherwise. But again, our job here is to provide you the news and information you can use. We're not here to go off our gut. We're not here to go get out over our skis and speak to a subject matter that we don't think we need to bring an expert in. If we need to go bring in some more information and data and experts, that's what we're going to go do. We're not going to get into a place where, you know, we're speaking out of our side. So anyway, on behalf of Colleen Schaefer, I'm Don Kramer with the Kramer Group at Urban Nest Realty. We apologize for the late episode here at Coffee with Kramer and Colleen. We're probably going into some water and some iced tea for later in the day, a late morning beverage. But we appreciate you tuning in because more now than ever, your real estate experience matters. So give us a call if we can help you with buying, selling, or investing in Las Vegas real estate. Till next time, you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.